A Robbinsdale man is now charged in an incident that put North Memorial Health Hospital into emergency mode after the hospital discovered someone had shut off its oxygen su supply for patients. Larry Redunes is charged with first degree criminal damage to property. The incident happened in late December. According to the criminal complaint, Redunes climbed a fence where the oxygen tanks were secured, broke cable ties and metal clasps, and then shut off the supply. Engineers detected the pressure drop. Hennepin County prosecutors say the crime could have injured or killed many people if the vandalism hadn't been discovered so quickly. Court records show the 39-year-old suspect was previously convicted of a misdemeanor for tampering with Excel Energy gas meters. A group of health partners, nurses and lab technicians who work at Twin Cities clinics has voted to strike in a dispute over health care benefits. The 1800 employees are part of Service Employees International Union. The strike will begin February 19th and last seven days unless a deal is reached beforehand. There is one health partners clinic in the CCX viewing area and that one is in Brooklyn Center. Residents of Crystal and New Hope will have to get a new way will have a new way rather to get information about emergency situations. We wanted to be able to communicate when there was a crisis. We wanted to be able to have a set app and way that we know that we were going to be delivering information to our residents. The Code Red program run by Crystal, New Hope, and the West Metro Fire Department will send alerts to your phone if an emergency happens. You can get notifications for everything from crimes, hazardous fires, to street flooding. We have actually already used Code Red once on the public works side. Last Saturday we had a water main break affecting around 30 homes. Uh, so we did uh, use Code Red for those residents that signed up for the utility disruption alerts. To sign up, you can text Crystal New Hope. It's all one word to the, what's on your screen. It's 99411. And of course, we'll have that information on our website, ccxmedia.org. Maple Grove's mayor has a new position. Mayor Mark Stephenson is now a member of the Met Council's Transportation Advisory Board. In the position, he'll help oversee all manners of transit issues from buses to light rail to the roads themselves. One project he is getting started on right away is the 2040 plan. Looking forward in time to where this transportation plan should go, sort of what the build out should be between now and then. The mayor says he is looking forward to providing better representation for the Northwest Metro on the board. A New Hope Dental team will be volunteering Saturday to put a smile on kids that are underserved. Gentle Dentistry on 42nd Avenue North is participating in the annual Give Kids a Smile program, which was developed by the Minnesota Dental Association. Volunteers will provide free dental services for children in need, and that includes cleaning and whatever else is needed. It's really amazing to think that one in four children aged 2 to 11 already have decay in their baby teeth and have no access to dental care. And dental disease for children is a much bigger issue than even asthma for children. So far, Gentle Dentistry will be serving 50 children who don't have access to dental care and walk-ins will also be allowed on Saturday. Yellow Tree Theater has a new show in Osseo. Neil Pursley gives us a glimpse in today's Weekend Showcase. Skeleton Crew is about work, or the lack of it. The play is set in Detroit during the downturn of the American auto industry. The plants closing, especially in Detroit, or the plants closing and moving out or, or going down south or outsourcing, um, it was, it was uh, devastating in particular to uh, the African American culture. The play unfolds the stories of four distinct characters, everyone with a lot riding on the ability to keep their job at the auto plant. We can get you situated somewhere. Just, I just need time to think. I play the role of Reggie. Uh, I'm the foreman in this factory. Reggie's somebody who's a, who's a family man. Um, he has a lot at stake with uh, being a foreman and knowing that a lot of factories around them are closing and shutting down. I ain't said nothing. I know. Not even a good warning. I play uh, this young guy by the name of Dez, very hard worker, but also someone who is understanding of the streets and what his environment is like around him. Uh, he has a lot of dreams to do more. 
and wants more. Each of the characters is equally compelling as the audience is drawn into the unfolding drama. There is Faye Davison, who is uh, uh, the OG or the old head. Uh, she's been there for 29 years, almost 30 years. And then there's Shanita, who is a single mother. You're the best out there. Man we often talk about how you should have pride in everything that you do, and that's who Shanita is. It is a gritty, very human story about tenacity and bearing up under pressure. For Weekend Showcase, from Yellow Tree Theater in Osseo, Neil Persley, CCX News. Skeleton crew performances run through March 1st. And the Terrace Theater exhibit opened to a sold-out crowd Thursday night at the Hennepin History Museum. Organizers say the exhibit is similar to the one that recently ran at the Robin Gallery. It was a matter of just reformatting that to a new design for people more outside of the Robinsdale area who might not be as familiar with the Terrace. One of the never-before-seen artifacts on display involves the bears that were above the drinking fountain at the terrace. Someone removed them from the terrace in 2001, and they were just donated to the Robbinsdale Historical Society a few days ago. That's one of the many stories that are part of this exhibit. And not just the terrace as it was, but the terrace as it ended up. The exhibit covers the whole life of the terrace from the beginning right up through the demolition uh, and it talks also in regards to the importance of theaters in local communities. The exhibit is on display from now until August. Trips to Giants Ridge and Bawabek for the State Nordic Ski Meet were on the line for some local teams in Section 6. Worth Park, the site for the meet, and Wyzetta's Lauren McCollar wins her first section title with a combined time of 27.35.9. It's a battle for third place with Wyzetta's Ingrid Halverson edging Armstrong's Sophia Pung. Hopkins' seventh grader Sydney Drevlo is fifth as the Royals play second to advance to state as a team. Wyzetta's Taya Vocati beats out Armstrong's Brian Dorweiler for ninth place, and the Trojans win the team title. In the boys' classic, Armstrong's Roger Anderson and Wyzetta's Colin Freed start at the exact same time, but Anderson skis a great race and takes first with a time of 1241.7. Freed is second, clocking in at 1314.1. Armstrong's Tommy Brandis finishes strong for third place, beating Hopkins' Caleb Dunwind and Wyzetta's Noah Castor. The Falcons win the boys' team title with runner-up Wyzetta also advancing, and we talked to McCollar and Anderson following their winning races. Yeah, coming off conference, I was really confident. I won conference by about a minute, and I was just feeling good, and it's really exciting to win the section title and the team title here. I knew from the start that I was going to have to put some time on him, so I just double-pulled right out of the start as hard as I could, and then, I mean, running up every hill as hard as I could, knowing that he was right back there. Spots in next Wednesday's State Alpine Meet are also up for grabs this week. Most of the teams in our area compete in Section 5. Afton Alps, the site for the Section Meet, starting with the girls. This is Marta Pendergast of Wyzetta. She qualifies for State with a third-place finish. Her time for two runs is 107-11. Jenny Cray of Armstrong is the first girl to qualify for State from her school in a number of years. Cray finishes 13th with a total time of 110-48. Right behind Cray in 14th place and also headed to state is Eliza Poliak of Hopkins. Her two-run time is 1-11-38. Minnetonka and Orno are the girls' team qualifiers. To the boys' competition and the top local racer in the meet is West Lutheran freshman Josh Nelson. He places fourth in a total time of 103-37. The next best racer from the area, Zach Thompson from Wyzetta. He places 13th overall after a good first run on a good day for the Trojans. Wyzetta's next skier is Kyle Seip in 21st place. And the Trojans get three more skiers in the top 26, and that earns them a trip to state as team runner-up to Minnetonka. Here's what three local qualifiers had to say. 
So I had a great first run, I felt like, and uh, the, the conditions out here today are awesome. It's a beautiful day, but second run didn't go quite as planned, but um, I think I still was able to pull through. And I mean, I can't complain. Like, it's pretty sunny. It hasn't been like that in a while. Um, I didn't really ski as well as I wanted, but I made state, so that's the goal, you know? Um, pretty good. A little conservative because I want to make it to state, but pretty happy with what I did. The Champlain Park girls basketball team upset Maple Grove a couple of weeks back and played good Blaine and Park Center teams close. The Rebels were looking to knock off a District 11 rival and they hosted Andover. First half, Champlain Park's Amaya Dory steps back and hits a long two-pointer. Maya Fitzpatrick spins away from the defender and scores, but the Rebels are down three at halftime. Fitzpatrick drives and scores a hoop here early in the second half. And then Michaela counts, fights off a defender and scores as the Rebels take the lead. Fitzpatrick kicks it out to Amelia Valentino and she nails a three-pointer and the Rebels go up by one again. Sydney White though drains a three-pointer for Andover as this game stays close. Maya DuBose drives and scores for the Rebels and the score is 40 all at the end of regulation. In OT, Nicole Lillard drives and scores for Champlain Park. The Rebels get a winning bucket from DuBose and they win it 45-44 in OT.